you know, the goal was uh, quit my job. My goal was to be at a major airline in five years, which was still a very, very optimistic goal historically. Uh Um, it worked out in, in three years and two months, which I am so thankful for. And I think that anybody who got into it now, I think even though it might, you know, they might not be at a major in two and a half years, they might not be at a major in three years. I think they very realistically could be at one at under five years with, with the way that, that things are going now. Hey, Matt, welcome to the Fly with Trent show. It is great to have you here. I always love telling my audience, uh, or rather sharing with my audience, more pilot stories. So because they probably don't know who you are, what's your job today? Uh, Today, I am a first officer with Frontier Airlines. Okay, cool. And how old are you now? 37. 37. All right. So you're you're not quite a career 2.0 guy, but you know, like kind of borderline. So we'll uh, we'll still let you on the uh, on the show. Yeah, it feels like uh, three like career 3.0 at this point. Honestly, really? Oh yeah, I've been been around the block. <clears throat> okay, cool. Without going into a whole bunch of detail about what you did before, like what was the what was the day job or what did you do for a living before you decided to embark on becoming? Um, so the, the the immediate previous job, I was doing a new construction real estate sales. Okay. Um, that was, that was actually kind of the job, uh, I guess 2.0. Okay. Um, and then I did, uh, my, my, my background is in uh, viral bacterial pathology. I did medical research, uh, for, for years before that. All right. So you're not, it uh, doesn't sound like you're a silver spoon or didn't win the lottery. Didn't come into this. Uh, not by a long shot. Cash. Not by a long shot. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about the journey. Um, so going from your notes here, when did it start? You 2019? Is that when you kind of began this? Yeah. So um, like all av geeks and aviation guys, it kind of starts at you know, childhood. Um, for me, it started when I was in fourth grade. My dad was military. And uh, it was a take your kid to work day. I went with him. Um, okay. Eglin Air Force Base, Florida Panhandle. He took me up on the hangar and we're watching F-16s, F-15s beat up the pattern there. Yeah. And for me, it was like, that's it. That's what I want to do. I want to fly, you know, fly for a living. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this industry, like everything, timing is everything. Um, when it came time to do that, I wanted to be a, a, a you know, fly for the Air Force. Um, I had to have a height-related waiver. Um, couldn't get one. They were doing no waivers back in 2010. Uh, you know, they're getting rid of people. So um, didn't work out got into the you know, different industry and then um, started flying in 2012 um, just for, just for fun. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it ex- excelled quick, um, got a pretty good chunk of hours really quick, you know, got 15, 20 hours really quick. Life happened, didn't fly for a couple of years and then got, you know, another 10, 15 hours life happened, didn't fly for another six years. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, life and jobs and money and income and, and uh, responsibilities. And that's kind of what took me to 2019 um, to, to deciding to, I wanted to stop working for a living and go uh, fighter planes instead. All right. So let I want to dig into that because I know from reading the literally thousands of comments on my channel, your story, my story of, you know, life happens, stop flying. It's, it's pretty common. And what this channel is about is helping people to get unstuck, whether it's awesome. in their head or in their life or whatever it is that's standing between them and the belief that they can actually make this a reality. So again, you're not sitting on bed. 2019 comes along and you decide, hey man, I'm going to go be a pilot. Let's first unpack kind of what happened in your head and what immediate objections did your brain come up with on why you couldn't do this? And then how did you deal with those? Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of came about, it, it was, you know, flying was always kind of the, the, the goal. That was, that was the dream job. Um, way back when the air force didn't work out, um, you know, the, uh, the, they weren't doing waivers, couldn't work out. I, I, I pivoted to go towards the medical field. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I was actually going to go to med school. Um, I, I was, I was one of my good friends that played baseball with his dad was orthopedic surgeon, shattered him for years. And, and, um, I was on the verge of going to med school and he was like, Hey, do you love it? I'm like, no, I mean, not really. It's just, it's, just, it's a job. You know, what do you really want to do? I, I want to fly. 
He said, go do that. Do not go to med school. You'll hate it. Go fly airplanes. Mm-hmm. And back then, financially, it just, again, didn't really make sense because 2010, um, you know, guys were starting at 19 bucks an hour. Yeah. And you can't really survive, you know, dishing out the money to go do it. I didn't have any money back then. Um, it just didn't make sense, you know. And then <clears throat> fast forward to 2019, um, you know, I was I was working a job that paid well. You know, it's all commission based, paid well, high stress. Um, I was a slave to my cell phone, you know, married, young kids. And mm-hmm. and and that that being a slave to the phone is just what it just it just killed me. I mean, the the more success you had at work, the more responsibility you had, the more problems you had. Um, it kind of hit me one day. I took, you know, I took my kids to Disney world and <clears throat> the whole day I'm trying to enjoy this family trip and my phone is just blowing up with problems, you know, phone calls and emails and managers calling me and all this. And I told my wife, I was like, Hey, I was like, you know, I I'm, I'm tired of this. I, I want more time at home, more time with my family. Um, this, the, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's, it's just not worth it anymore. So in March of 2019, um, I went and talked to my, my buddy that lived on the street, one of my, uh, you know, hunting, fishing, uh, slash drinking buddies. Uh-huh. And, uh, he was a, a line check airman with frontier and he gave me the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. And, uh, he made a comment of a, Hey man, best thing about this job. When, when you're done, you're done, you're done. Like you're done. You, you turn the jet off, but you have no responsibility until yeah. you have to come back and do it again. And man, something resonated with me immediately. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, that could be great. So I, I kind of mentioned to my wife, like, hey, um, Cass, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that I might want to go back and like go knock out my ratings and go do the, the airline pilot thing. And my first thought was from, I almost put an objection in my own head from her because when she, you know, agreed to do life with me, like to marry me, I had a stable job, a stable income. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, 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 we had, you know, we were, we were set, we were comfortable, you know, we weren't loaded by any stretch of the imagination, but we could pay our bills and, and we, you know, we had food on the table and we, we were comfortable and, um, all that would be going away. So it's like, wow, like I will be abandoning this career and this income that I've been grown accustomed to, um, for a huge, what if, and, and, uh, you know, then you start hearing the age thing. I was 33 at the time. I think mm-hmm. I made the decision 33, which is still pretty young, all things considered. Cause I, you know, training classes, I've had a lot of guys in their forties and fifties, you know, who are doing it. Yeah. Um, but when you're 33, 33 feels like middle age. When you, when you're your kids. At my age now, I still see it as young, but 30, I remember being 33 and I was like, yeah, I'm in the man. halfway. Yeah, and, and, uh, and you got a, you know, you got a, you got a mortgage, you got kids, you got, yeah. um, you know, all that stuff. And it's like, man, um, uh, you know, I'd really like to make this work. So I kind of put on the back burner initially. You know, I talked to her, I went and talked to Josh. That was March 19. Um, I told her about it. And um, it just kind of put on the back burner a little bit. Like it was in my mind, like, hey, this could be realistic. But it wasn't a, hey, let's go do it right now. It's, I'd really like to do this. Yeah. So fast forward to July of 2019. Um, man, I just had a couple bad weeks at work. I felt like I was working for the evil empire, honestly. It was like, like they were having me do things like I, I was, you know, I, I was in sales and I was all about being honest with people. I was all yeah. about, um, you know, getting the best service I could start losing company support. Um, they started pulling back on things that, 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 that we offered that made me look like a liar. I hated it. And, yeah. um, just came home one day and I was just beat down. I just had to listen to some music and unwind. And it was actually my wife. She was like, Hey, she's like, why don't you go ahead and like, like quit your job. We'll be fine. Like go, go fly. Like, if you think that's, that's what you want to do, you know, if, if you want to do it, go, go do that. Like, go do what it takes to make that happen. And man, Trent, like the next day I booked my first class medical appointment. Mm-hmm. I mean, the very next day I went and got it done, got my first class medical. Um, and then I just started researching and researching and researching. And, um, you know, it was, uh, I, I had a few mentors. I had some friends that were in, the, in, in like in the industry, um, but they all had a different path to get there. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them either went to college for it, a lot of them were military, a lot of them flew military for it. I didn't know anybody that took the route that I took. And there were a lot of um, just unknowns. And, and, and I, I tried to get information at different flight schools. And man, that was like pulling teeth, man. I mean, that was some of the places I went to. Um, you know, I called ATP first because we have one in St. Petersburg. And um, 
my first thought was like, all right, they've got money for a call center. They've got money for all of this advertising. That's a lot of overhead that I don't want to pay for. Mm -hmm. Um, That price tag is way more than I want to pay. So that's going to be gone. Went to a local school in Sarasota. It was kind of okay, but it was also tied into the 141 world. They had a 141 or a part 61 option. Price tag was way more than I wanted to pay. And then I went, uh, I went to a, a, a in uh, downtown St. Pete, uh, Albert Whitted Airport down there. I found a school. And when I first went in, um, the person I talked to, it was just like, you know, you know, you're coming in, you're coming in with the unknowns. And my question was, hey, I want to come fly and start from the beginning, go all the way through. Um, how do I do that? I got zero information. Like it was one of those things, if you didn't ask, like the person who was helping, and I became good friends with her later. Mm-hmm. But at the time, it's like, if she would only answer the exact question that I would ask. Like, wow. I was trying to get like, hey, like, like what's going to take? Well, what question do you have? I mean, I, I don't really know. Like, how do I start? Oh, we can go online and fill out this form. All right. Well, how much is it? Oh, here's a sheet. This has some of our costs. It was just like, man, like this, it was like pulling teeth. It was tough. So I left kind of feeling defeated, a little overwhelming, you know, a little intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I just went back home and, and I, I called it, you know, I called some friends. Um, he's like, Hey man, just go back, like go back to the school that you think would be the best fit. Try it again, ask more questions. And I went back, there was somebody else working that day and it was all the information I needed. It was delivered to me in a way that was perfect. I had every answered question before I left in 10 minutes. And all of a sudden the picture got kind of clear and um, went back home and I told my wife, this is where I want to do this. This is how I want to do it. Put the plan in motion. And then we decided in September and see, okay, I had a, had a bunch of closings lined up in September. Um, Once we can get that income that we can use to pay for the training and kind of like keep us afloat, you know, um, financially, September is going to be the day. And, um, that's, that, that's, uh, what I'd set. That's what I planned for. And that's ultimately what ended up coming to fruition happening. So it sounds like you picked a small flight school that was part 61. You enrolled full time and treated it like a full time job. Do I have that right? I, I did. Yeah. It was, it, it, it was a kind of a, I mean, it's a mom and pop school, but it's pretty big. Um, they had uh, 12 planes when I started 18 planes when I left. Okay. Um, super laid back. Um, it was an amazing place. I talked to a lot of the instructors there and uh, they had a lot of good things to say. Um, it, uh, I, I did that. The plan was, I had a set budget. Um, I'd actually budgeted, um, 60 grand. I was like, all right, 60,000 bucks. This is what I'm willing to spend. Yeah. Um, my goal is to do it in 40, um, you know, 2019 dollars. And, yeah. um, I'd, I'd already had, you know, 40, 45 hours coming in. So that would kind of help in the grand total, the two hundred and fifty. Absolutely, thing. Yeah. and um, <clears throat> so I, so I, I did that. Um, you know, there are challenges in twenty twenty that we all face, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I started uh, September second, started cranking out um, hours. Check ride for my private was December seventh. Um, started on instrument. My daughter was born December or uh, January sixth of twenty twenty. Took a month off for that. This uh, virus thing popped up a little bit Mm -hmm. after that, 2020, the flight school shut down, um, you know, for a few months and uh, that was a challenge. And then, um, you know, was able to knock out um, instrument and then build time all that summer um, with another friend who was doing the same thing. He he was a little bit younger, but he was going through the exact same process and um, had my commercial check ride September of uh, 2020. So about a year later, a year from starting, have my have my uh, commercial check run. And then how long? And did you want to CFI after that? I did. Yep, CFI uh, December, late December of 2020. I did uh, my CFI check ride, and then I started instructing at for that flight school um, in um, February February 1st of uh, 21. Okay, so you, if I'm doing the math right in my head correct me if I'm wrong, a year and a quarter ish and took over from 45 hours to a CFI. That's right. And, and that was, you know, taking off time for COVID. Um, yep. I, I took the month of June off. It was my yeah, birthday month. Like could have chopped maybe four or five months off of that. If could COVID have. didn't happen and you didn't have a baby and all that other kind of stuff. Absolutely. Could have. Okay. One, of, one of my friends did. In fact, I had a buddy that came up behind me and did it. And, um, he went from zero hours to jet blue in two years, four months. Okay. 
All right. Let him know I'm looking to beat his record. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm on track to do it. So as long as, awesome. uh, as long as I don't blow the interview. Um, all right. So you, did you then hang out at that school? And, and, but by the way, what was the the final budget when you were done to get you to CFI? So to CFI, everything to CFI was 33,000. 33. Okay. 33, 33,000. Yeah. All right. Uh, and you were, do you remember what the uh, hourly rates for rental and instruction was? I do. It was one forty three an hour for one seventy two, yep. wet, um, and it was sixty two an hour for an instructor. Okay, and so, I, sure. it, it helped. I mean, you know, you know the tricks to save the cost, so it it, it helped. Um, one of my buddies owned a flight school um, up in. Uh, he's actually my first instructor ever. He owned a flight school up in uh, the Dallas area, mm-hmm. and he he kind of he's like, hey man, um, find somebody at the same phase as you are, and flying under the foggles is going to be your best friend, uh, flying under the hood. You're going to learn to love it and you're going to do tons of it. And you and your buddy can split the airplane. You guys mm-hmm. each fly. You're under the hood. He's safety pilot. And then do cross countries, do the same thing back. And you guys can log all that time. Pretty much uh, PIC. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's a very good way to, cause on the, on the th- way through your instrument and your commercial, it's a ton of just flying around. Yep. Boring holes in the sky. Literally. Boring Literally. Holes. Yeah. Cool. All right. So then you, did you stay with that school and, and, and get all the way to 1500 hours or what that journey look like? <clears throat> I, I did. So they knew, um, I became pretty good friends with the manager there. Um, after I had had the second stop by there, where I got the information. Um, the, the, the girl who had, um, helped me out with that, she put me in touch with the manager and I told the manager, it's like, Hey, here's my goal. Uh, making a career change making a life change. I, my goal is to do all my training through you guys. And when I'm done, I would like to instruct with you guys. Um, and, and she was awesome. Um, my hat you know, tips off to her because she, she held a spot for me when people were getting furloughed and laid off for COVID and they were getting 10 applications a week. Um, mm-hmm. she kept a spot open for me for, you know, uh, two months to, to, to make that happen, which is great. Um, so she knew what she was getting, you know, she knew, she knew exactly what she was getting. She knew she was going to get somebody who's going to be there for, you know, another 12, 1300 hours. Yeah. Um, you know, they weren't just going to bounce, you know, as soon as the, the, the floodgates opened up again. Um, so, um, from January or uh, February 2nd of 21, um, I instructed full time until, um, April 26th of, uh, 22. On average, how many hours a week were you logging as an instructor? I was doing six to eight hours a day, five to six days a week. Yeah, I know how that feels. Oh man, <laughs> it's just you know getting it's a after. lot of work. It, it is, and, and it's um, you know we we had the students to do it, we had the airplanes to do it. Yeah. Um, something where I kind of uh, differed um, from from a friend that went through the same time I did. Um, if if I had a student that canceled. Um, I was immediately on my phone finding another student that wanted to take a spot and, and there, there was no downtime. I mean, it was, if, if I was there and I was working, I was, I was working. Yep. All right. So after what happened at the end of that? So into that, um, I got a call in, um, at 1200 hour mark, 1250 got applications out. Um, I interviewed with, uh, Republic Airways at 1250 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I went in interview with them in February of 22 and uh, they offered me a position and I started with them, um, April 28th of, uh, 22. Okay. So that so, was, uh, ATP CTP class the week before take the uh, ATP written next day on a plane to um, Indianapolis, um, to go start the, uh, the, you know, the ATP life training yep. and all that. Yep. Okay. And since then, you've uh, you've gone on to I think you went from Republic to Frontier, where you're at now, right? That's right. Yep, correct. Okay, cool. So, for the folks who are listening to this, who are thinking, "Man, I really want to do that," but for whatever reason, they haven't figured out how to do it. Hopefully, you've you've cleared the air on it. Costs it doesn't need to cost a hundred grand. It doesn't. It does not have to take 12 to 18 months. That's just what the big schools want to tell you because they want to take your hundred grand. Right. Um, 
And then if you, if you hadn't, so I know that these days because of the issues with Boeing aircraft and their ability to deliver the, the planes, they're supposed to deliver to the majors. And that's, that's temporarily slowed down hiring. Right. Although we're coming off to like cra- probably the two craziest years in, in hiring history. Forever. Absolutely. So I know some people's excuse these days is, Oh, Pilot shortage. I've seen it in my comments. Pilot shortage is over. That's it. There's no more jobs to be had. You missed the boat, which I think is just absolutely ludicrous. Completely crazy. Yeah. So, not, yeah. Not true, what, do you tell, what do you tell to the people who either them or their spouse is worried that the big bet might not pay off? What would you say to those people? It's no, I mean, for one, you got to look at the, what is the driving motivator of them wanting to do the career? If yeah. they're just looking at it and they're like, oh, I'm going to go make, you know, three, 400 grand a year and only work 12 to 15 days a month. And that's what I'm looking for. And, you know, just, just do it to make a ton of money. Um, and they want that really quick satisfaction from the way that it's worked, you know, for, for, for a timing aspect. Um, I was very fortunate to catch it at a really, really good time. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, I had three instructors that I actually have seniority over at Frontier. Um, and no one's had different airline because they, they had, um, they had CJOs at, at regionals COVID hit, they lost their CJO. Mm-hmm. They went and signed a contract doing a, you know, part 135 operation that, that required a year long contract to go fly, uh, mm-hmm. a, 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 you know, whatever jet of, of your choice. And they were stuck there. They were locked in instead of just writing it out flight instructing and then go into the airline as soon as they could when it opened back up. So yeah. I was able to leapfrog them because I came in, I finished mine and I kind of jumped them because they had, they were stuck in the right seat of a, you know, of a Lear or something, something they were yeah. stuck on. So, so seeing that and then seeing my buddy who I went through commercial and CFI and all that stuff with, he didn't drive to knock out his hours he would just drag his feet oh man i'm making you know 30 40 bucks an hour this is great like i'm just gonna take my time and get my hours and i'm like mm-hmm. hey man like you want to get through it as quick as you can because you never know when you know you cook cook while the grease is hot kind of thing yeah and um me and the other buddy we, we had a full year and a half on him um, even though we started at the same time we had a full year and a half on him seniority at our airlines now because um you know he kind of took his time so anybody who's saying like, hey, like, like it's happened, it's passed. First off, it's completely absurd. That's not true. Um, once these issues correct themselves, they still need a ton of pilots to operate these airplanes. There's still a lot of retirements. There's still a lot of demand. Um, as soon as Southwest gets their jets going again, they're going to start hiring again. As soon as United gets their, you know, their, their issue going. Uh, the Pratt & Whitney issue also that's kind of slowing down a lot of stuff. Um, the Pratt Money Motor issue, they're starting to, to find, um, you know, fixes for that. So it's an industry where, where, where time, you know, it literally, it's a race for a seniority number, quickest mm-hmm. to a seniority number. Even if you're starting when times are awful, that's probably the best time to start because other people are seeing the industry and they're like, oh man, pilot shortage is done. They're slowing back. See, I told you this wouldn't be the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you start at that point, then you could catch it to where all of a sudden you're finishing your hours, you're finishing your time and then hiring kicks off again. And then you're going to be one of those people that are going to catch that wave and and be able to be able to write it in. Um, Another thing is that pay. um, 2010, when I considered doing it, pay was what? 19 bucks an hour starting out. And you're going to be on reserve probably three, four years, like at a regional. And yeah. then you're going to, you know, then you're going to, going to be there another four or five years before you got your time to go off to, you know, to a, to a major. Um, now, no matter where you get hired, whether it's a, a regional or a low cost carrier or whatever, you're pretty much, you're starting out at six figures. Yeah. I mean, every airline's starting, I don't care where you are. I mean, you're starting out around six figures and, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, I was looking at 45 to 48,000 at Republic starting out. 2022 april 22 end of 22 it was like 90 yeah. and now you're looking at 100 like everywhere so so things have progressed they're not going to go backwards I and mean, they're not going to go down and um yeah there's been a ton of people who are going things are slowing down but man if it's if it's a career that you want to do um you know it might not be gangbusters you no know, delta might not be hiring 2,000 people a year for the next five years 
but they're still still hiring, you know, six, seven, eight, nine hundred a year, maybe even a thousand a year. Mm-hmm. Um, Americans got so many retirements coming up that they're going to be hiring people like crazy. Um, you know, if that's what you want to do, if you need the legacy thing, uh, legacy thing wasn't a good fit for me and my family, which is why I chose a uh, low class carrier. Um, but even in the short time I've been there, I mean, my, my seniority has gone through the roof in a very short period of time. And, and because, of, because of defections to the majors. Absolutely. Yeah. To the legacies. Yeah. People, uh, you know, it, it's uh defection, people going to, you know, Southwest United. I mean, it was a joke for a long time that, that frontier was, uh, you know, the best, uh, the best training program for United Airlines. Like yeah. Losing a ton of people um, to them. Um, but it's, it's, it's different strokes for different folks as far as the actual career goes. And, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people want that, you know, wanna, they want to wear the hat. I'm going to go wear that legacy hat. <clears throat> um, I, I kind of saw through a lot of the, the, the glamour and the, um, the prestige of it. Um, for me, it was a quality of life move. I'd have yeah. time with my family. And um, Frontier is the absolutely perfect fit for 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 me and my family. Has Frontier slowed their hiring at all, or are they still hiring right now? We're, we're back up. I think the last two training classes have had, been full, 60, 60 uh, new hires a month. Um, right. We slowed for a little bit. Um, we slowed, which, which typically like Christmas, New Year, like Christmas, January, usually slow down anyway. Yeah. Um, but, but they're back up to, to, to full classes. Trying to trying to catch up. We have a ton of brand new airplanes on order that are coming in. I think we're getting like twenty new airplanes this year, and uh, they're opening a lot of bases like crazy. So they're, they're they're growing quick. Do they have any plans to open a base in Boise? Do you know? That'd be awesome. Um, I haven't heard Boise. Um, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to do. I don't want to start like like the rumor mill. Um, I know that we just opened Cleveland. Um, you know, because everybody wants to go to Cleveland. You can cut that out if you want, or you can keep it. I don't care because I'm not a big fan of Cleveland myself. <laughs> Um, Cincinnati, we're opening a Cincinnati base. Um, we're opening Chicago again, and then we've got a San Juan, Puerto Rico base coming in June. Um, there are talks of something in the West that they, they've, they have alluded to the next base that they're supposed to be announcing pretty soon. It's going to be in the West Northwest somewhere. Mm-hmm. So who knows? You Las Vegas. We already have a Vegas base. Yeah. Oh, you already have one. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we got oh. Vegas. Yeah, Vegas is one of our biggest bases. Uh, we got Phoenix. We got we got Vegas. We got um, Chicago. We got Dallas, Atlanta, Miami, Philly, Orlando, Tampa, and then the other ones that, that I mentioned. How many pilots currently work at Frontier? Do you know? 20, I think we're at 2150, 2200. Okay. And when, uh, when was Front- Frontier started? Do you remember? Oof. Um, it was, yeah. It's you know, that, what, you know what the head count was pre-COVID, the peak n- pilot head count? No, that, that's kind of a weird, a weird thing because Frontier's kind of been like uh they were a different airline before and then Republic owned them for a while and yeah. they went back. I don't know the exact history of it. Um when I got hired, to, to put it in reference, when I got hired, I was number two thousand thirty-five. I'm now number like 15, 1530. Wow. Of almost 2,200 pilots. So 500 have left since you got hired and you've been there for what do you say now? I've been there 14, 15 months now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, My other regional friends tell me the same thing. Their seniority number goes up fast. Yeah. Right now it's looking like 30 a month going up about 30 a month. Um, Yeah. Cool. Well, Matt, I want to, uh, on behalf of the audience, I want to thank you. If, if Before we wrap, um, is there anything that that if you were interviewing yourself that I haven't asked you that you think your younger version, your earlier version of you who was you know, looking for a flight school or thinking about this as a career, is there anything that that guy would have wanted to know that we didn't talk about today? Um. Give me one second, because that's a really good question. That's a solid question. Um, you know, one is one thing I would say, and, and something I didn't I didn't mention before. Something else that kind of pushed me over the ledge to like go ahead and just go like go for it and just do it. Um, <clears throat> one of my really good friends, uh, one of my buddies, he uh, he owned his own own a company, owned like a, a car, uh, he make cars go fast, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, dude never had any money. 
ever. He was always like paycheck to paycheck. He was doing what he absolutely loved. I mean, he would, he, he, he loved the industry. He loved it. He would do whatever it take to get there. Um, so he got killed in a motorcycle accident, super unfortunate. Um, at his funeral, there was kind of that like click moment, like, man, you got, you know, you get one life to live. Mm -hmm. You have a career that you can do that you can love, or you have a career that you can do just to put food on the table and just to make money. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, there was something there that clicked. It's like, man, like you've been obsessed with airplanes since you were a kid. It's been a dream job since you were a kid. Do what it takes to make it happen. Like, like, like go do it. You, you will not regret it. If you can pass your first class medical, um, which is, that's probably the biggest obstacle really, because everything else is up to you. Um, if you can't pass first class medical, it might not be your fault. You know, it could be, you know, vision deal or definite ear or whatever. But as long as you can pass that, everything else is up to you. And with putting the work in, you can absolutely get through it and absolutely get there, even if some things um, do not come naturally to you. Mm -hmm. I had a student who was, <clears throat> he was my best study student I've ever had. He was, he was extremely astute. Anything he did wrong, I'd tell him once and he would fix it. He could not fly the airplane to save his life. I mean, he just, he just couldn't. He physically... It just came so slow. I mean, it was 35, 40 hours before I was even comfortable to consider letting him fly this thing by himself because he just could not fly the airplane, just physically did not have the hand eye coordination skills to do it. Um, he got there and now he's a fantastic instructor. And now he's got a CGO at, a, at, a, at an airline. And, and for him, it's life changing for him and his family. Uh -huh. And, and he is one of those people that, that probably anyone else would have quit five times over. You know, they would, they would have quit and walked away, but he pushed through to make it happen. So if, if it's something that somebody wants to do, there's, you know, 101 different options to pay for it these days. Um, I can't afford it or finances that that's something where that, that, uh, objection is, is, you know, there's a lot of different ways to overcome that. Well, let's go um, into that. Because I know people right now who are listening, they're going to be like, details, give me the details. So let's unpack that. Yeah. So um, there's the old fashioned way. Um, living, doing the, the Dave Ramsey way, I guess would be, is uh, living super cheaply, um, living within your means, saving up a lot of money and then going for it. Um, fortunately for myself, that was the, the option that worked out for me because I... You know, I, I drove a 15 year old used truck and um, I didn't have any debt, um, you know, paid for college uh, by working my butt off, you know, back in school. Um, and I was able to stack all the money that I made to, to put towards this. I didn't have any bills, didn't have any debt to put it towards. I was extremely fortunate. So that was one option to pay for it myself. I had some friends that went that way as well. Um, some people feel like you have to do the ATP route because they offer financing. Um, if, if you feel like that's your only option and for some people that might be like literally their only option, but it's an option, the way you can look at it is, all right, yeah, sure. I might go hundred grand in debt to do this, but I'm going to be starting out at hundred grand a year mm -hmm. and you can pick up extra flying. You can pick up an extra two or three trips a month and all those extra trips you can put towards your debt. Yep. And it's going to hurt and it's going to suck. And it's going to be painful, but you can have that paid for in two or three years. You can pay all that off. Um, another option is, uh, which is one that I don't recommend. Uh, I had a friend who did it. He's actually doing it right now. Is he, um, he did a, a, a HELOC on his house. Yep. Um, property values are through the roof compared to what they were, you know, 2018, 2019. There's a lot of equity there. People were taking out loans in their house to pay for flight training. Um, the one thing that I don't like about that is if something goes nuts and you know it doesn't work out, well, you, not only do you not become a pilot, but you could possibly lose your house. So I'm not a huge you know uh, proponent of that. Um, there are Part 61 schools that you can finance. Um, they're around. Um, I've, I've had friends reach out and, Hey, what do you think about this school or this school? I didn't even know about those schools before mm -hmm. you can finance them and they're much less expensive and you can go at your own pace, which a lot of times can be faster than a 141 mm -hmm. and at a fraction of the price. Yeah. So, uh, I know there's one in Jacksonville, um, holiday aviation. Uh, I got a friend that was starting there and, um, he sent me a link and I was like, wow, this is, this is really impressive. This is cool. Um, their, this, their phone's going to blow up now. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it is for sure. Hey, 
I don't know you guys, but um, if you guys will send me some swag, a hat, a t-shirt, then you know, reach out to me, and I'll be happy to wear it. Um, I looked at their website. They had cool information, and um, it would absolutely be a really good option. And then there's also just um, you know, working your butt off and just flying while you're working at the same time. You know, carve carve out a schedule and, and do both. Yep. Absolutely. And I've said those things uh, in several of my other videos. So rather than reiterate at length, let me just say that I agree on all counts. Like anything in life, my opinion is if you want it bad enough, um, you you will be able to figure out a way. It might not be as fast as you want, might not be as comfy as you want, but you know, I'd still rather slog it out for for four years to then have 20 years of a job that's got a great lifestyle and a good income then keep doing a crap job I don't like for 20 years because I wasn't willing to go through four years of, of a bit of discomfort or maybe a lot of discomfort. hundred percent. Unfortunately, you know, we live in the microwave society where everybody wants everything instantly. And in some cases that's just not realistic. It is a line that I said a lot. I had, when I quit my previous job, um, I had a lot of people that reach out to me from that job and they're like, Hey man, like, was it scary? How'd you do it? Cause I want to do something else too. And, yeah. and I don't want to walk away from the money because you, you get these sales under your belt in a new, you know, new construction home. You don't get paid when you sell it, you get paid when you closed it. Yeah. So if you have, you know, five, six homes on the ledgers, well, you're not getting paid until they close. So if you leave before they close, all no that money, money is too. gone. Yeah. It's bye. So I was telling them, I was like, Hey man, like I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but the idea is short-term sacrifice for long-term reward. I'm willing to walk away from all this future money. I'm willing to walk away from these these paychecks coming to to have the long-term reward of a career that I'm going to love, a job that I'm that I'm going to love, one that I'll you know one feel good about. Cause you didn't really feel good about you know people ask you to party. Hey, what do you do? Oh, I you know, sell new construction homes. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, someone's got to do it. It pays well, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel excited about that yeah and uh oh, now you know hey that looks way cooler hey what do you what do you do for a living uh you know flight airplanes oh gosh it's so cool hey if you you know our our our, our chemtrails real or our clouds real is the, is the earth flat you know <laughs> I, I hear that all the time and and no it's i mean clouds are real the earth is round but are you sure though can you are you sure that earth yeah, is dude, where are you hanging out <laughs> nobody yeah. asked me that stuff <laughs> man I, I hear it all the time it's like my goodness gracious and uh, it's fine. I, I really enjoy it. And 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 the goal was, you know, the goal was uh, quit my job. My goal was to be at a major airline in five years. It, which was still a very, very optimistic goal historically. Uh -huh. um, it worked out in in three years and two months, which I am so thankful for. Um, and I think that anybody who got into it now, I think even though it might, you know, they might not be at a major in two and a half years, they might not be at a major in three years. I think they very realistically could be at one at under five years with, with the way that, that things are going now. Yeah. Yep. I'm in complete agreement, obviously, because I'm on the very same path. So it's been a real pleasure, uh, Matt, to have you here. I suspect that uh, this, this, interview will get a lot of views and there's going to be a lot of questions posted in the comments by folks. So I'd love it if for the, at least for the first week, if you would make a habit of regularly, you know, check in the comments, I'll make sure once it's uploaded that you get a link and that you're aware of it. Absolutely. And then, uh, and then beyond one, one, that. Yeah. One more thing, another, another advice thing. Um, you know, the industry, I don't know what it is about the industry. Everybody pushes uh, CFI, double I, MEI. You, you don't have to have all three of those no. to get your hours and to go on. And you can save tons of money by just stopping at your CFI. Yep. Um, there's enough demand out there and, and, you know, just, just be really, really good at, 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 at what you do. So if you're just, a, if you're just a CFI, Hey man, be really good at being a CFI. You know, if you want, if you're in the instrument thing and you want to be a double I, well then those guys, a lot of times they'll focus on just double I students. Um, if you want to spend the money and go get your MEI, then you can be kind of the, the MEI guy at your school and do the MEI. But that's a lot of extra costs that you don't have to accrue. Yeah. And um, also, uh, a lot of times, you know, if you wait to your multi until after you're hired on at a flight school, you get a discounted rate on aircraft rental. And uh, doing your multi at half price 
can save you, I mean, right there, three, four, five grand. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. I got all those letters and I use the CFI 95% of the time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I echo what you say. If you're, if you're on a constrained budget, um, don't worry about that other stuff. Just get the CFI. Airlines aren't, they don't care. Airlines don't care at the interview. I mean, they, they really don't. All right. So to finish up what I was saying, if you've got questions, folks, leave them down in the comments. Uh, please help us to get this video in front of other people that need to see it by uh, giving it a like. If this is your first time on the channel and you think this is cool and you want to see other stuff like this in the future, would love it if you would join the Fly with Trent community by becoming a subscriber on YouTube. You can also become a subscriber over at flywithtrent.com if you want to get email notifications of future interviews and future videos that I publish. So on behalf of the Fly With Trent community, Matt, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for making the time. It is, it has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Thanks. And sorry for uh, getting back to you so late from the original uh, message when you reached out. That was, that was my fault. No problem. <laughs>